for remembering it. This is the Neo Books call for Monday, September 16, 2024. Sorry, Klaus, you were going to say. Yeah, I came down with COVID last week. And yeah, you, how are you doing? Well, it's this is my last day taking the uh, medication, the, that five day regimen. Uh -huh. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm like, I don't know how, I'm gonna, how long I'm going to last because I had meetings all morning already trying to catch up. <laughs> wow, wow. But, but it's, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it, it fatigues you, you know, so the, the, so your, your brain starts like, like all of a sudden you notice you have a brain working now, it's, uh, it's weird. Yeah. Did it, did it knock you down a lot this week or were you? Last week? Yeah. I mean, I think it, I came really down with it like on Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, and on Thursday I got the medication. Um, so I've been not trying to be flat, but it's just a pain in the neck. You know, I was supposed to have a, like meetings downtown and so on. You have to count. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Um, um, Pete Kaminsky, who is occasionally on these calls, is very, he and his wife are still masking everywhere. Uh, they're very much on the page of this epidemic is far from over. Um, and we should be careful. And and I'm surprised at how much we've normalized it. It's just, yeah, it's, it's kind of, it is, it is spread. I mean, it's everywhere. I mean, neighbors, you know, people I'm working with, uh, it's definitely out there. I think, I think. I don't know. I'm an amateur analyst, but I think a piece of what happened was we managed to be very effective on it, its mortality rates. So, uh, so we figured out how to intervene early so that it's not as yeah. fatal as before. I don't know that we figured out how to deal with long COVID and the onset of long COVID and who has more risk of long COVID. And that, that, that number is still like very unpleasantly high. So mm -hmm. part of, part of the reason that Pete and his wife are still very active on this is they don't want to run the roulette risk of, of, of you know, having long COVID. Um, but because we've sort of managed to overcome the overwhelming of our hospitals and healthcare system, we're like, well, it must be just like everything else. And mm. this is uh, the, the, the truck that I, yeah, that I can't pronounce. I'm sorry. It's just saving my life. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, Uh, is yeah. Each time I I've had COVID a few times now, and each time I get it, I feel that even after you know three, it's not long COVID, but each time six months I'm still not as well as I was before I got it last time. So I know wow. my health just goes down a little bit each time, and then I get a common cold, same thing again. And you know I think it's really played with our um, immune ab ability. Mm -hmm. Class, you were about to say something. Yeah, so the medication that uh, hydrofoxin, I forgot what it's called. Um, but the when, when you look at the description, it says you know, the, the government is handing that out for free, basically to keep people out of the hospital. Oh. Um, and it, it prevents uh, this thing from getting into your lung um, and, and, uh, um, and prevents these long-term effects, you know. So mm. it keeps it, it, keeps it uh, contained. Mm -hmm. This is the third time I have, I have mm -hmm. this, and each time I'm taking this five day regiment, and typically after five days I'm I'm done. Mm -hmm. And also, all the protocols for what to do if you have it have changed dramatically to the point where it's like, yeah, you know, maybe self quarantine, maybe whatever, but we don't care. It's like, ah, mm -hmm. yeah, my wife is uh, totally on the ball with this. <laughs> <laughs> It's a don't come anywhere near me without a mask, right? And it's just yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, in, in our household, we've each had it only once, and when April got it, she was sort of the first. Uh, and we did in inside the house quarantine, which turned out to be really cute because we have a two level house and there's a, a stairway landing <laughs> that you can see from the, the lower level. So most mostly, I stayed downstairs. She stayed upstairs, but she'd come down to the landing and look through the bars of the railing <laughs> at me and say like. Open the fridge. Show me what's in the fridge. <laughs> yeah. it, it was very funny. So. Oh, well. So what's happening with the Neo books? Yeah. So um, I was hoping Jose would join us and we could dive into a bit of the uh, our protocol stuff and maybe frame out what those projects might look like. Um, I've been doing a tiny bit of work on my uh, Neo book on design from trust. 
Um, I wanted to check in and just see where we are because we've kind of missed a couple of calls and uh, and so forth. Uh, and, and also, um, I have a trip coming up to Australia, uh, November 24 through December 12. So that will interrupt probably my being on a couple of these calls. Um, so we we shall we shall sort of see how that all uh, all plays out. But Jax, thank you for being up at a crazy hour uh, to join yeah. us here. Fine. I I get a lot out of these sessions, but I, I do admit sometimes I do go back and have a nap for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I can't blame you at all. So my my little world clock says it's three forty three in Melbourne, but I don't know if you're in the same time zone. Yeah, same time zone. Oh, crazy. I know. I know. I I do. It's, it's um. I do get up. Well, I just think, um, you know, we can feel very distant in Australia. And uh, I, when I actually do this, you know, not not every, not all every day by any means, but I'm, I'm quite happy to get up and have a chat um, and connect. Otherwise, it just wouldn't happen, right? So, yeah, yeah, it's it's interesting how these these different calls that are regular calls have become kind of support for lots of folk in lots of places. I I love that about them. It really yeah. helps. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm happy to go wherever both of you have interest on the general like neo books topic, like yeah. um, what you what we should be doing next. Besides the agreement stuff uh, with Jose, um, where you are on yours, uh, Jax, I'm interested in your kind of take on what you've seen so far because you've yeah. you know you've you've come in and and seen us going at different kinds of topics and issues. So I'd, I'd love to know more about that. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, and you probably you might be asking at the time when I've just been sort of starting to piece a bit of that picture together too. So um, I, I can kick it off if you like. And and so um, I, um, I, I'm seeing those sort of threads with that the living book concept, as I, I think I've mentioned in another session, across um, through... Uh, the neo books, the obviously the R protocol, because I think there's you can see the synergy there, and then some of the um, that legacy work. And so I'm looking at that level, thinking about how, uh, and maybe maybe close this with you with emergence, how this is emerging as a thing that we see is really important that we're able to carry across a piece of information and knowledge along the lines of that wiki basically that you're all we're all sort of building this these things and that's that is a really fascinating idea that's coming out of our age uh, although you sort of think those great tomes uh, the religious tomes are probably con they were constructed probably on a similar basis in terms of you know they must have been in some ways anyway I'm thinking about how we're doing that as um, something that's emerging um, I really now starting to shape up um, tackling one mm -hmm. or um, contributing to one and then seeing how that might shape up and also maybe writing about it. I'm just trying to uh, start documenting some of the things that I'm seeing as I'm, um, you know, skating through these calls and others. And I wondered if I do write up um, just a short, maybe a thousand words, I might bring it here and um, have some in, put it in if there's something that we can talk about in that that sounds great mm. um in terms of the uh the the i wonder how this will clearly you give the space for it um klaus you and and you, jerry and the others like a, an hour and a half every week is a really great piece of time to start building something and that's um that sort of gives it a place of importance. So I'm really curious about how how this goes along, um, and I think that idea about um, you know seeing where things are at is really important. The R protocols work. Um, they would be really curious to see how that works in terms of those um, those protocols. This is Klaus, what we talked about last week. Oh, uh, the week before oh, I've lost track. Probably the week before, yeah. Probably the week before. Um, I, I, I wonder about um, how I wonder about its um trajectory 
about how it goes and stays. Like Jerry, you you're probably the main person who's keeping it up and going. And Pete, I don't know Pete, but Pete is can keep it in the back end. Um, so as an idea, and we've got generous people like Klaus and Jose and others, as an idea, how does it keep formed? Like I'm curious about that. Like as mm -hmm. time goes on, um, and how does it get disseminated so that others can be part of it? Um so I'm curious about it, I don't know. So that's been my sort of thoughts so far. I, I'm really interested in in this. And uh, having watched, uh, Class, I was just saying to Jerry, I, I watched um, the Trust TED Talk again last night. And I'm starting to understand a little bit of your process, Jerry, but also how you're seeding that, which is that it's kind of like a, a very organic trusting process, like, you know, I'm, I'm a stranger from Australia, turning up every week. <laughs> um, class, you're here. We, we're contributing little bits and pieces. It is a trust project. So it's very experimental. I love a good experiment. And um, that you've been going for so long is really great. Um, I think, yeah, so they're my, they're my thoughts. And now I really want to, you know, as in they get in there and have a go at one and um, and then see how that might um, shape my thinking and you know how it can contribute so yeah that sounds awesome um yeah thank you uh, Klaus any reflections on what Jack just said yeah I mean the the conversations have morphed you know since we originally started so when we first started um chat GPT had just come out, right? So so we were we we had like a beta team that was working uh, on on with the with the 3.5 version at the time. And then um while we were in, in the middle of working on on what I started, you know, the story of soil, um 4.0 came out and so I started integrating that and upgrading to it and was a total game changer then, right? Um and <clears throat> so for me, this was really an experiment. Uh, and and the the original uh, concept was because Pete uh, Kaminsky came in with uh, one train being a trainer for GPTs, right? So there was this beta team, and we were training the GPT. So my mm -hmm. mindset really was, uh, we need to train this thing. And that's our mission, right? Is to to advance the AI, um, and and that so that was that like first book, and I'm still in the same mode to some sense, except I'm in the meantime. Pete actually had a conversation with me saying, "You are the under the illusion that you're training the AI, when in all reality it's training you." <laughs> <laughs> and, and that was really, uh, and yeah, that in hindsight, that's really you know what seemed to have happened, but. Um, um, yeah, so when you when you read the first book, uh, like the, the story of soil, you know, you see sort of a progression where I'm, there's one chapter dedicated to how I'm interacting with the AI, you know, and how, how I'm using it. And then from there, we are advancing. And um, it was completely serendipitous how this book unfolded, um, because uh, I would just uh, create you no know, chapters talking about how insane this industrial agriculture really is, how divorced from the natural world, you know, how um, how damaging to to life, right, inside the soil and everything mm -hmm. around it, and so on and so on. And then it occurred to me that uh, so there was like the first third of the book, and then it occurred to me that how do you explain this to anybody? And then I got onto this spiral dynamics cake and then so we explored spiral dynamics. Um, <clears throat> and, and, and it was really, that chapter was really meant to explain, uh, to, to, to create a tool, right? To, to, to co communicate with different cognitive of uh, uh, worldviews with, with worldviews, right? Based on cognitive 
on capacity, on cognition. And so how do you talk with someone who's in the red or blue sphere about what's happening to the soil versus someone in orange, you know, mechanistic, kind, versus someone in green who's basically the Sierra Club and you know that sort of thing. And, and so you realize that you have to create a yellow language, which is mm -hmm. transparent throughout the entire spiral. Right. So, and, and when I, uh, I, I get a lot of comments coming back with how transparent my newsletters are because they're written in yellow language, right? mm -hmm. which is, uh, which just, you know, carries throughout the entire spiral. Um, and then I come to, <laughs> to, okay, so there has to be a process in uh, somehow. And so I came into theory U. So we explored how theory U uh, creates a progression, you know, down the spiral to to find alignment uh, into a stage of presencing where we can all agree on what is happening and 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 how we got to where uh, it's happened. Whereas typically in theory, you when you enter a, a problem definition, the Western mind runs to solutions. Yeah. Um, but the the theory you concept is that um, the 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 uh, the pro problem definition is always inadequate because you have to go through the iceberg model, right, to look underneath the waterline to see all the relationships that are that are connected to this problem before you can really begin to understand what is happening here. And then so you go through steps of exploration, right? That uh, allow everybody to get on the same page of understanding, yeah, this is not the empirical uh, uh, flow that got us to where we are. Then you go into crystallization, you know, where you're saying, okay, we got where this is, but we sort of begin to understand where we need to go. Right. And then from there you go into prototyping. Maybe, maybe you're designing solutions in the 50, 60 percent range, understanding that it's a design as you go. Right. And actually, when you're working in really large projects, um, design as you go is standard, right? Typically you deliver blueprints about three months ahead of actual construction work in the field. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so that's that's sort of where the book number one came about now. Um, and then book number two is now uh, 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 the the concept of theory U, which is which is leading from the future as it emerges. Mm -hmm. Right. So you put yourself three months ahead of of it or more, six mm -hmm. months ahead, right? And then, so you know, here is the future as it emerges. So how do we, how do we need to, to influence where we are right now, our course of action, our direction, you know, to follow, to 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 modify so that we move into this future as it wants to emerge. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's that sort of so. Book number two is, is it's completely serendipitous again. So when you look at the individual chapters, um, it's like the last newsletter I just published uh, uh, this week or uh, you know, last week was focused on uh, uh, you know, explaining how um, we have disconnected from the natural world uh, and how it's reflected in the soil. In Australia, the same thing. You know where we have devastated millions of acres of of fields uh, by destroying the microbiome inside these fields, mm. which is disrupting the hydrologic cycles of entire regions, right? Where uh, uh, the soil has dried out, that means it heats up. That means it rejects the rain coming in, but when the rain is finally powerful enough. It comes in and it floods the fields, right? Because hot air holds more water, uh, and so on and so on. So, so just so so now I'm I'm I have landed at this is really a spiritual problem. 
Mm. You know, this is really uh, um, Western science having disconnected, you know, from an from even the most basic understanding of nature, right, and biology, and and uh, biodiversity, and life, you know, uh, uh, in its multitudes, uh, complementing each other, and each has its little niche and purpose. You know? Wow, that's amazing. Um, you, you blow my mind, <laughs> Klaus. That is, um, thank you for sharing that, uh, uh, Jerry. If I might just um, take the mic just for a moment. Mm -hmm. One thing that I'm um, picking up and one of those patterns I'm putting together and what's very interesting to me with that. So, A, I want to read, I, I jump in and have read. This is on the, on the Neo Books project. Is it up there, Klaus? Um, you can go can on the it? website and the books, I published the books on my website. Yeah, thanks. And so I'd love to go and have a look. What I'm starting to see, because um, is that is that intersect, is a, like I've been playing in that intersection trying to just research, I suppose, is probably the best word for it, research and experiment between the humans and nature and the technology and then playing in that little sweet spot in the middle. And part, there's two sort of places where I've been, and one is around try, um, understanding the technology and then looking at the, uh, the neo books and, you know, the brain and looking at all these different ways that we uh, uh, understand and document and, and grow and share our knowledge and information. And then, you know, which feeds then into the future of work um, and and I'm interested, uh, Klaus, in that sort of sense of long-term thinking. So your your three month that three month project, um, watching the future emerge and then trying to meet it as it's wanting to emerge, it's fascinating. Like I'm really interested in that. At the same part of it, which is it's just really interesting that we're having this conversation, even just uh, before you dropped in today, is this idea about the long-term future of humanity on the earth and looking at this, the, um, I've been looking at the bioregional kind of thinking. Um, Jerry, you've just been at this Regen AI, which I'm um, sort of um, piecing together is very similar to this kind of conversation. It's sort of saying that yeah, we've got this great technological world being developed here. It's also really hungry for energy and is it actually going to solve our problems? So we've got this, these two um, sort of opposing paradigms but really, in some ways, they've got to come together, these ideas. Ah, oh, here's Jose. And so then I wonder uh, what the bridge is between those, because I can see value in both of them in terms of our long-term you know, humanity salvation. We can't kind of go no tech because we're way too far down that rabbit hole, uh, and we can't go uh, into, in, way into the other direction either because we've left that ship sailed. So um, it's interesting. So what you're, you've just described there is kind of this, um, is part of this as well, which is the the sense of um, the soil, the health of the soil, um, is really part of who we are. So we really, it's interesting to say it's a spiritual problem. It's really starting to get into the core of, um, you know, who we are as cellular entities floating around <laughs> in the cosmos on the earth. And I never imagined in my life I'd be having these kind of conversations. Um, but, yeah, there's something in there that's really interesting. Um, so thank you for sharing that. Any um, any thoughts, Jerry? And hello, Jose. Hi, yeah. Guys. Jose, thanks for thanks for coming in. Yeah, sorry I'm I'm late, but I was uh, I had a meeting that I was supposed to have half hour before, but then I was backed up at the doctor, so that meeting got pushed up, and here I am. Ah, so. Oh, glad you're here. Um, yeah, we've just been sort of going around checking in about the project as a whole and talking about, you know, uh, what's coming in. Um, I, I reported at the beginning that, that April and I were at an event uh, called the Regen, Regen AI Summit uh, that a couple of friends um, basically uh, produced and ran that turned out to be really good uh, down in Ashland, uh, Southern Oregon. So, um um, I don't know. I, let me feed it back because my my better half just sent me a, a note with exclamation points on it. I think she's gotten some good news. Oh, she did. 
uh, she just won a, a, a spot at a, a to speak at a conference that's like a really good exposure if you're a speaker. So, hey, wow, hey, that is awesome. That is great. That's that fantastic. is awesome. That's really good. and she she had a feeling about it. She, we were talking about it the last couple of days, and she had this uh, she had a, a presentiment that it might actually come through, and it has. Uh. Oh, I love good news. Congratulations. Yeah. To yeah. April. Wonderful. I'll tell her the Zoom is proud of her. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Jose, do you want to check in with anything? Or, or are you... I was just going to say we're also proud of you. That was a nice uh, reel that you did. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah the, the, the reel is out now officially. Like last Tuesday was my big, uh, big uh, launch. <clears throat> it's kicked up a bunch of interesting conversations. I need to uh, now I need to push the little flywheel so that it keeps spinning and, and doing more stuff. Uh, but it's exciting. And um, one of the bits of good news was April had written a few of the Bureau, Speakers Bureau agents she knows. A representative she knows and uh it's interest from several of those so luckily i'll get represented by at this point i am represented by a, a bureau and, and several other kind of speaker sites but they're not they, they don't understand how to market me so they're not turning up anything yet uh so if i can get all that working then it all starts humming yeah but, wow but it's right. fun to explain yourself like that yeah yeah, no, that was, that was a good job. I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, so just a bit of a check-in for me. I've, um, the, the uh, our protocols is, has been updated a couple of times uh, since we last spoke. And uh, we now have someone in Mexico working on the Spanish. Um, and someone in Brazil working on the Portuguese. So we now have those two languages are up there as well. Um, and, uh, and so the UI should be those three languages, English, Portuguese, Spanish, um, in the next little while. Uh, content wise, we've played with uh, some output of what, uh, if you look at the bottom, if you get a chance to take a look, look at it at the bottom you'll see the the uh, private um privacy protocols which is just the privacy statement for our, our protocols uh but they're made up of protocols uh that are built into the the protocols platform and so there's a a new output for them so the idea is to have multiple ways to output them uh and so this is uh we haven't actually built the little library that we're going to publish for extracting protocols. Um, but, uh, but this is the first sort of use of it in that way. The next step is uh, to build the uh, features for users to be able to adopt a protocol and to have their own protocols list so that they can, once they adopt a protocol, they, they say, okay, here's all the protocols I have and all the different mm -hmm. categories and be able to then extract those protocols to their um, to their website, to their um, uh, ex extract them with QR codes, extract them as PDFs, that kind of thing. Um, uh, just so. a tiny little bit of inspiration from what you're saying. I have a now page, which I use, which um, comes from a guy named Derek Sivers, <clears throat> the guy who did the the video about the dancing guy on the hillside and how mm -hmm, mm -hmm. being a first follower is so important. That guy, I met him years ago and he's really interesting, you know, run by his own drummer. But years ago he said, hey, um, forget those long signature files on your emails. He just has slash now. And then that, ha that goes to a, a now page that you maintain. And I'm not good enough about keeping mine completely up to date, but I replaced my SIG on all emails with slash now, which is just a link. Um, you could have you could start a similar thing around how pages and so, have people list their protocols there. And that would be completely cool. Well, we've been trying to figure out how to reach out to the guys at about me. Yeah. 
uh, because the about me guys are kind of doing, you know, the, the simple sort of basic uh, business card like websites for people. Um, and they have been for a while. Then they got, you know, they sold it off to AOL, I think it was back in the day. Uh-huh. Uh, and then uh, took it back. They acquired it back and then stopped doing it oh, and they sold so it they, off. So they, but they bought it back out? Yeah. And then they found investors. And it doesn't sound like any of the three original founders huh. are, are doing any of it. Um, I don't know if you know any of those guys, but... Uh, uh, so, yeah, the idea is actually to have my personal protocols page uh, that that speaks to who I am and then how to deal with me. How so do why, I deal? Why are you talking specifically to about.me? Because that would be a very specific instance of this, right? Correct. Uh, just that's one of the ideas. Um, yeah. uh, but so tell me more about that slash how. Yeah. Like, well, slash now is the thing that exists. Now, pardon slash, me. Slash how does not exist. <clears throat> However, uh, ought to exist. <clears throat> um, because it's such a pretty parallel. And the slash now thing is completely voluntary. Um, and Derek publishes a page where other people's slash now pages live. So if you have one uh, and you submit it there, they'll list you along with the other ones as having a slash now page. Uh, I'm just looking for where I've put this in my brain because doing the slash is giving me a command. Let's see if this works better. No, that's very strange. I think they've done something to the brain where if I put type a, a slash in, uh, it, it, now thinks, feels it. Mm. it now thinks it's a command. That's interesting. So now, now, now. Dot com is... <laughs> so, uh, uh, no, if I go, if I, if I go to now, um, so here's my now page. Uh, and I think at the bottom of my now page, let me just go check. I've got a link to the overall now pages. I think, let's see. Uh, uh, more on now pages, uh, and I didn't put the link in. Damn it. Okay, so I've got to go do that. Um, there we go. Sivers explains now pages. Now, now I'm finding what I want. Uh, here is uh, nownownow.com exactly. So yes, you are correct. Um, that is the site where the now pages are collected. Um, what else? Why don't I have that connected to Sivers? That's so interesting. So none of this was showing up where I thought I, I was looking for it. Um, and it seems like a, just piggybacking on that and saying, hey, everybody, <clears throat> go put, uh, uh, go create a new page called how on your root directory, refer to it as your how page, and put in there all the R protocols that you uh, have agreed ag agree to, and on from there. I, I think that would work just beautifully. Uh, technically, uh, I, most people don't know how to set up a, a slash on their directory and all. So that this is not stuff. a slash. It's just a page on my website. It happens that the way you address it or the way you talk about it is slash now, because that just means it's root directory and there's a folder called now. That's all it means. But but if you if you have if you build your own websites, it's real easy to create a page called now or a page right. called now. So so it's not it's not that big a, of a stuff. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean they have to learn how to command line program it. Okay. So the idea for us was uh, to to do includes, right? Uh, right, and so and how would those work? So the idea was to to you have your page about yourself, whatever, mm -hmm. and here's how you deal with me. Here's how you my protocols about interacting with me, my personal human protocols. Mm -hmm. Here's my work protocols. Here's my privacy protocols. Here's my whatever, right? Like all mm -hmm. of these types of things, uh, and. You would link, click on that link, and it would actually open up the full protocol, the one that you uh, have adopted. And and then somebody could QR code it. They could extract it. They could save it. They could they could actually choose to adopt it themselves, uh, all in that environment. So we're we're seeing is that these protocols actually exist not only in 
in our protocols, but they exist in people's use of those protocols. And so that's where discovery would happen. Most people wouldn't actually go and write a protocol, right. but would actually consume a protocol in somebody else's use of it. I think you subscribe to one or you uh, adopt, adopt one. Yeah, yeah, adopt is probably the right language. Yeah, yeah. that's that's it. Because, because the language has to imply that you have agreed to use this thing, that, yes. that it's part of you, uh, part of the way you work. Right. Um, and so what, what we're, the next step is to build the adoption routines. Right. So that you can adopt and have a page, a, your own page on, on the, our protocols that says, here's all the stuff that you adopted, when you adopted it, what version you adopted, blah, blah, blah. Um, sort of like a you know a, a list of stuff that you've you've done on this website. So, do you have a page that exists now, which is your collection of our protocols? Do you do you have a place where these are collected for you? No, no, that's what we're about. Okay. To build. Uh, do you know which our protocols you would put on such a page if hypothetically what one would were, were to say that you had one? Yes. Okay. So um, um, I, I have you know, the, the medical ones as an example, right? Right. The relationship ones, right? With, with my spouse, right. uh, with my uh, stepchildren, the two girls. Um, it's the idea is to, to, to build protocols into our language, into our relationships, into the way we relate, how we relate with one another. Mm -hmm. And, and then, so the bigger ones are, um how do we build collaboratives how do we set up an llc how do we do accounting how do we do bookkeeping how do we do blah 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 so all of that kind of stuff on the operational of an organization and community relational and personal and health those are kind of the main ones and so there's there's a piece of this which is just about kind of one of the things that surprised me when we had the conversation about our protocols uh, was how deep and broad they are. Like you just said, they go into every aspect of life, which means they could be easily overwhelming or confusing. That mm -hmm. if somebody were to bump into your protocols and start like leaping through them, they'd be like, oh, wait a minute, you've got stuff here on medical interactions. How does that work? Um, and so... Is there a is there a, an, an external facing layer? Is there a docking station that is the simple part that is for other people wanting to interact with you um, that you could externalize and then say, oh, by the way, here's the rest. Here are the you know all the rest of the protocols that I'm using, just to, to kind of make it so that there's a consistent, simple set of external uh, protocols that we can expect most people to have, and then from there on, it's like whatever you want to put in here and you're willing to be explicit about how this works, go to town. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Don't, we don't know what that looks like right now. Okay. Um, and this, this, what you just coined as the how page, uh -huh. which I really like. Um, uh, so it's, it's the Jerry how page from now on. So um, uh -huh. no, no need to do that, but I would be very happy to prototype one. If we can figure out what are the R protocols that I would adopt I, I will slap them on their ASAP because it's super easy for me to, for me to, to create the page. I, I, I can make this happen as a demo yeah. uh, real quick. I just need to figure out how to include the R protocols and which, which more importantly, which ones to include. Yeah. Um, uh, and the idea is, is that you, you, most people won't consume all of your protocols. Exactly. Right. So, you know, your business people are going to presume deal with your business protocols, right? Uh, your uh, family is going to deal with other protocols. Your your personal use is you, your personal use. You don't have to tell people that, you know, I do sinus rinse every day, right? Um, but that's the doctor I saw this morning. And, ah. and it's a big deal for me because I've had surgeries already. And, you know, so... Um, I, I'd want to help other people who are dealing with it. It's more about that than it is because um, if I had known what I know today, I would have saved myself a lot of a lot of pain. This is a uh, round roundabout way to sorry, finish what you're saying. I, so I was gonna say that that I think there are 
different places where you would put different uh, aspects of your protocols. Yep. And so in your organizational setting, your professional life, blah, 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 that's a different type of scenario. Uh, your personal stuff, uh, I have a personal blog. Here's my personal blog of how I'm. people should know that I have this disease and this thing, and, and maybe this is helpful to you. Good luck. Um, and then in, in, you know, personal relationships, it's like, honey, here's our, here's our printout, right? Um, we don't necessarily have that published on the outside of the house, but, you know, if you want to walk in the door, here's the protocol. Yeah. Um, so, so the intention is to not necessarily treat them as a whole thing, mm -hmm. but the concept of protocols as is really the the idea is to con bring about a concept a concept of protocols that makes us feel like we understand that we're using this language of something that we're willing to try mm -hmm. and adopt and uh, adapt as it needs to rather than this rule of you know we've we've made the law and now everybody has to stick to it Exactly. I love that. Uh, just a roundabout way to some medical stuff. Uh, there was a site, I don't think it even exists anymore, called Patients Like Me, uh, which was crowdsourced medical data that people were sharing. They were they, they were kind of oversharing because these were people who, I think originally they had uh, ALS, am amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, uh, but, also, but then people with migraines and all that, and they created a private community where you had to have a condition to join. So the data was kind of protected by, by a, a pass through into membership. But once in, because it was a private community and not a provider of any sort, they could ignore HIPAA rules and all that, at least when they started. Uh, and so they managed to get people to put in, here's what I'm eating every day. Here's my sex life. Here are my vital signs as far as I can. And, and, and by oversharing a lot of data, they got much better interesting statistical results from doing actually strong analysis on the data. And they would find, and I'm making this up, that you'd get like these multimodal distributions of results where for migraines, for some people, for people in this cluster over here, uh, a wet towel over your head and a nap works really well. For other people over here, a mydol and a something else works really well. And, and th those are different distributions and you should just, you know, try which one fits you. But, but these are our protocols for what works for us. And, and it feels to me like there's a very nice match between what you're talking about and mm -hmm hard-won wisdom in communities, in research, in personal life, and whatever. Um, I had a household in West Philly when I went to grad school my second year, where one of our housemates was from uh, Canada. He was a, a born in Mexico, raised, you know, went to school in Canada. He was really clever. Um, and he showed up at the house and said, well, we had some odd but really useful protocols for how we ran our household when he did a, you know, housemates uh, in Canada. And he introduced us to them. We adopted them wholesale. And we had a very happy household because we didn't have the usual, this shelf is my shelf in the fridge, that shelf is your shelf. Nah, we didn't do that at all. And we had a completely different arrangement that you wouldn't come up with out of the blue, but could easily be codified as a set of recommendations for other people to follow. So I'm, I'm on board. I, I see this. I can see this everywhere. Yes, I'm seeing it everywhere as well. Like, yeah. Um, part, part of the reason that I was late was because I walked in to two or three minutes early to my appointment and the, the front desk person didn't actually put me into the computer. Mm -hmm. And so oh, yeah, they you came had out. An appointment. I, no, they, no, they, I had an appointment. She didn't check me in. So the, oh. the, the doctor was sitting in the back waiting for me. And oh, gotcha. the, the nurse kept coming up front and asking, is he here yet? And the other one kept saying no. And I thought they were talking about somebody else. Oh, so man. it's like, is he here yet? Is he here yet? No. And it's like 25 minutes later, I'm like, oh, oh what are they wait a minute. What's going on? <laughs> <clears throat> that sucks. Yeah. Um, so my point is they don't, amongst themselves, they don't have the right protocol because they don't ask both nurse, both <laughs> front desk people. They right. only ask one who didn't check me in. Exactly. Um, Klaus, I'm, I'm also thinking that for example, I could easily see um, some of your work turning out protocols for how to talk to people at different levels in the spiral dynamics model. And you could, in fact, ask GPT 
to describe those things as protocols. And maybe, and Jose, I don't know if you've explored this, but if you have a prompt description for what a protocol should look like, and we, we talked a little bit about that, is it a pattern language? Does it have, you know, are there particular things that a good protocol should have? What are they? But if that turns into a prompt, or you can create a custom chatbot that knows how to do that, <clears throat> then the chatbot could interview people and out the other end could come official R protocols that humans would vet and then could, could get put into the collection. But it could be that a chatbot might be a really, really big helper in creating viable protocols. Yeah, and, that's and a step that, That's a, a step for us in the next step. Yeah. It's already part of, we've played with it a little bit. Cool, and already. it causes, I'm imagining the work you're doing, I can see a, you know, how do you talk to farmers about this as opposed to how do you talk to congressmen about this, right? Well, it's part of, of how I train. Uh, it's part of the training program for the chatbot. So I'm not necessarily making a protocol out of it. It's it's inherent in in the way this thing is structured. Uh, so I don't need I don't need to say it anymore because it was part. Uh, like Neo Book One, Story of Soil, when you look at the uh, section of spiral dynamics, um, there is one section where I ask a very specific question about how do different colors perceive climate change and and how how do other colors interact with them? You know, so for example, you have orange manipulating blue uh, uh, in uh, about climate change and so on. So, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm not quite sure how how to uh, use protocols for that particular thing. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I I think what Jerry was suggesting is that that you use protocols as a way to to uh, push that information to your to the people you're dealing with. So the organizations you're working with. Um, how do they talk to farmers? How do they talk to other organizations? How do they talk to governments? Um, uh, you know, th 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 and I think, I, I'm not sure if it applies to you, but my, uh, my sense is that protocols as a way for us to exchange knowledge with each other becomes a really powerful way of thinking mm -hmm. because we're not necessarily... Um, sort of pushing things. We're just saying there's a protocol for that. There's already a way to do that. You might want to take a look at that. Yeah. It may not apply to, to what you're referring well, to. Well, you can make it apply, right? But do you need to? You said for my, my question. Yeah. Um, because the the uh, it's part of the of the training. Uh, I mean, like I mean, I'm interacting with a group of startups in the in the Palouse region, and my my as, as I'm developing the, uh, the the business plan and all of this. I mean, I'm pointing out that we want to be creating language that's target group specific, mm -hmm. right? Um, so target group specific means when you're talking with a farmer, that's you know, a different language than you're talking with the <laughs> extension service scientists. Yeah. Um, so that's that's basically as, as, as simple as that goes. So I don't sometimes sometimes it's just it's just uh, simpler to use common sense and, and uh, keep it keep it uh, keep it simple. Mm -hmm. Cool. And, and yeah, so Klaus, for me, I was, I was just making a bridge between the protocols that Jose is working on and the work that you're doing, because it feels, it feels like you could, we, with a little bit of work with some uh, uh, good assistance from GBT, um, you could in fact have a set of protocols that you might not even externalize, but would help you in some sense formalize or organize the insights you're getting from your work. as this moves forward. Yeah, I haven't thought about it. Cool. Um, I was say that's really cool. And and do we, where on your path schedule is creating, I mean, are you going to put up a demo page, whether it's a how page or not? I, I love the idea of a how, a how page. So I'm mm -hmm, going mm -hmm. to prototype that regardless. But is it on your agenda to do that pretty soon or? What yeah, well, that's that's what I was saying. Is that's the next piece is the adoption, 
Um, the adoption uh, creates the the list that's built into our profile, yep. our protocol, pardon me. And then, uh, and then the extraction is the next step. So how does that get that list get extracted? So you can actually have the list and or the individual protocols themselves being extracted. Mm -hmm. So um, that's that's the next step. Yeah. Have you talked to anybody at howto.com or any no. of those kinds of sites? Cause no. Because it feels like there's a near neighbor there. Yeah, the how-to guys, my sense is they've become super commercial. Right. And, uh, it, it, you know, someone said, oh, you should be talking to uh, other players like LinkedIn and stuff like that. And it's like, those guys are so super commercial that, yeah. it, you know, going down the path of trying to break down those walls. I worked for a media comp company yeah. that was commercial, and I know how tough it is to, to, to it, it's just not... Right now, not where we want to waste our time. Anything that doesn't turn into clicks or profits for them is not that interesting to them. Sorry, Klaus. Exactly. Man. Well, I mean, I, I mean, I think about, let's say, my time with Disney and and being embedded in the Imagineering team, and we had you know four and a half billion dollar projects, um, you know, like California Dementia or Hong Kong. Um, there were protocols in place that uh, regulated how, for example, mm -hmm. an architect designing one of my restaurants had to interact with me for checks that uh, where, where I would have control over the size of the kitchen, the layout of the kitchen, the layout of workspaces and so on. And, but at the same time, it had protocols that restrained me to uh, in, engage with the creative process and tell them that, uh, you know, I don't like this, or I don't like this color. And so that was none of my bucket. So you had kind of these protocols evolved, but that was a huge, but these are huge projects, right? And you had multidisciplinary uh, uh, issues where, uh, you know, the engineering team came in uh, and, and said, you know, you can't use uh, 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 gas often here because in Hong Kong they use uh, synthetic gas made from <laughs> from oil, <laughs> which was like a nightmare and had only half the BTUs that uh, regular gas has. Wow. So, so anyway, so so you're dealing with you know, a lot of of issues that that need to be raised. But um, I mean, that's big stuff, right? I mean, that's that's interdisciplinary, huge projects. I don't have huge projects right now, no, so I'm, I'm the, the way I'm interacting uh, with people is is a, a more of a flow uh, basis. There doesn't mean that there shouldn't be uh, uh, connections, right? That need to be respected and 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 evolve. But uh, uh, typically, I deal with that as it comes up, you know? yeah. not not to anticipate stuff that may never happen, but instead. Uh, you know, deal with it on, a, on an ad hoc basis. The, the reason for our protocols is really the fact that I think we're going to see uh, large organizations like what you just described in very large projects become more and more fragmented. Um, and uh, so we're working with co-ops here in San Jose that are, you know, six different little co-ops. They're going to be working together and they don't know how to work individually together yet they're still struggling to do that and they sure as hell don't know how to work together as a, a team of six different co-ops and so how do they start seeing each other and talking about things in a different way and so we're starting the process of teaching them what a protocol is, protocol is and how they can use protocols amongst themselves within the team and across teams so that they start to see that there's a certain set of rules that would normally happen in a corporation as policies, as edicts from bosses and so on and so forth that are really, really helpful. In other words, when you're a co-op, very often you kind of ignore those conversations because they feel bossy, right? Somebody had, tells you, this is the way you do it. I've told you, this is the way you do it. You must do it. But co-ops kind of leave each other to just sort of feel everything out and they don't like to, to say there's there's a way to do it because they don't want to get into that business of telling people what to do. And so 
the the protocol is really a way of helping these groups communicate. And when I was saying about uh, Laura and I, so our one of our, I was going to say our number one, but I'm not sure it's our number one protocol is if you feel it, say it. Like, don't wait until three weeks later to say, you know, for three weeks now, you've been telling, you know, you've been doing something that's bothering me, right? Feel it, say it. And we're the reciprocal protocol for that, feel it, say it, is say it, listen, right? And so the yeah, say it, listen that. is if she'll she'll say something and I'll go, okay, I need to listen because I don't know where it's coming. I'm not going to get defensive. I'm not going to start saying I didn't say it. I didn't do it, blah, blah, blah. I'm just going to listen. And so <clears throat> that's an example of a, of a, a very thing. But then we tell the girls that are now have boyfriends and so on and so forth. And it's like, hey, we have this little protocol it might help you. Right. And it's like, oh, well, I never heard of that. And maybe that's helpful. So that's that's an example of the more sort of uh, personal stuff. I don't know if that if that makes sense to you guys. It, it does in general. I'm not sure how it fits into the neo book frame. Uh, and 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 what uh, what we are where we're going with with neo books because that's uh, I mean I'm working on this project uh, in the Palouse and we are uh, consolidating a group of startups uh, working in different parts of the food system and they're all companies I mean they're all revenue generating uh, groups and you know there's quite a bit of money involved the government that puts 160 million dollars into you know, the development of uh, you know, uh, communication structures to let uh, different regions communicate and what have you. But yeah, I can see that um, we are still in a in a very formative stage. But I can see that there will be, have to be some formalized uh, uh, protocols on how we communicate and how the decisions are being formulated and all of that. But that comes out, you know, as as you as you go through the setup stage um I, t I just don't understand how this fits into the neo book project and where um, do you want to go with this yeah yeah so so class this is what came up sort of in the yeah rules of the road terms of engagement exactly <clears throat> this is what came up when, came up when we had our first call about understanding what our, our protocols are and it's very much about um we had a bunch of calls called the generative <clears throat> excuse me the generative commons agreement mid-pandemic, we sort of uh, set aside and tried to try to write up a generative commons agreement, which meant when we're sitting here doing stuff together in these calls, um, we are mostly, like most most of it is collaborative, open. Uh, I take these calls and I publish them openly on YouTube uh, and we share our notes, et cetera, et cetera. But some people in, you know, in the conversations have businesses that they run and some commercial interest in doing these things. And maybe even just in commercializing some of the good ideas that come out of here. And that's that's okay. But how does that all fit together? And how does it work? And we weren't able to sort of finish writing a document that gave us that. But if our protocol got close to that, I would love that. And that would actually work really, really well because those would be the rules of the road for these kinds of conversations. And any neo book would have just that would like it would have a copyright notice or a copyleft notice or something like that it would have a notice that says, and here are the rules of engagement for these ideas. And, and more than that, going back to the start of this call, for what living web pages look like that are that are the core or the root or the heart of what's in this document. The document is just a, a cold, dead snapshot of a lively conversation ongoing. And we need to know what the, how, what the rules of the road are for those lively conversations and for how you propagate and what you can do and can't do with this info. You know, so <clears throat> the, the Wikipedia is under under basically copyright terms that mean, and I think that the German Wikipedia did this, you, you can publish a book about all, using all the contents of Wikipedia, publish a book and sell it, and that's fine. Wikipedia is like, cool, you use our, our material well, you attributed us, that's okay. Um, but there's other things that I think you can't do, and I'm not sure where the lines are and what the limits are. So in some sense, this this helped there. And then there was another piece, which was, uh, <clears throat> which I don't remember now, because there were two projects that I was interested in that relate to neo books around our protocols. One was for sure the Generative Commons Agreement. I'm forgetting what the second one was, but it felt equally sort of vital, and it might have been about 
around how to how to write a neo book. I think that was probably mm -hmm. it, because this idea of nuggetization about you know how big is a nugget, what sort of metadata do we use, all those things could easily be written up as our protocols. Not only can they be used uh, written up as our protocols, mm -hmm. I think that they are um, synonymous with one another. Mm -hmm. That a a nugget and a protocol are can be thought of as as very similar things. And so I think that the 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 things that we learn about how we're going to use a protocol, how it's going to be adopted, how it's going to be reused and reiterated through is not all that different than how we're going to use a nugget. Mm -hmm. And and so my sense is that the the a, a nugget, understanding a nugget and understanding a protocol is in essence congratulator for us. Yeah. <laughs> I'm passing congratulations. They know I'm I'm giving you high fives over here. <laughs> yeah. Six out of a hundred plus. I, I didn't give details for what it is. I can I can explain. <clears throat> yeah. Um cool. Keep going, Jose. Um, so th this is why I originally said, I think we should have that conversation. And you said, well, why don't you sort of present uh, our protocols? I, I truly appreciate the interest and, and wanting to continue the conversation around our protocols, um, and the help, um, uh, and, and, you know, setting up a how page and all that stuff. I think that's really great and wonderful. And I appreciate it. Um, to Klaus's point, I think the thing that NeoBooks wants to do, I think, with our protocols isn't just like what are the our protocols for 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 NeoBooks, but is actually I think that there is a, a meeting of the minds that they're coming from the same energy, and that. Because of that, I think there's possible technological overlap. I think there's possible uh, communications overlap of, of how we do these things and what they mean to each other. And so for me, those two things are, um, there's a, a huge potential, I think, for us to understand and help each other through the thinking of this as the same thing in a different domain, in a slightly different domain. That's 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 where, for me, it's important. Um, just building on that, I found the notes the, from the call where we did, where you did the intro, and I had written down, let's work on protocol suites for NeoBooks. And I, I still like the idea of there's a collection of protocols that turn into a suite that you adopt as, you know, hey, we want to start a multi-stakeholder uh, uh, cooperative. Okay, great. There's a suite of protocols that we've got that will help you sort of go, go ladder up and do that pretty quickly. Um, but also, I, I think that this could, ease, this could over time play up to being governance stacks or suites. Exactly. Where, where, where the, the calls that's what, that I, that's the, call, the intention. The calls that I hosted about, hey, what what works in governance around the world? There could easily be a set of of uh, our protocol suites that that would answer that question quite elegantly. I, I, that's not a big stretch for me to imagine. Absolutely. Boss, does that make any more sense? Yeah, I mean, I I, I look at neo book as I mean, I started this thing because of the linkage to AI. <clears throat> using AI and and I mean I have I'm on my fourth book you know so so I got uh, nuggets everywhere um, no one has picked up any of them yet even so feel free to do it if that makes sense to integrate in any of what you're working on so I would I would love to see someone else write new books and nuggets and see how that links up so I'm not so much worried about protocols and you know and and all the uh, uh, admin part around it. I would just like, like to like to see some substance, and and uh, so if you have written something, you know, put it out there. See how I mean. I would love to find someone who has written something that would make sense within my uh, the, the new book and and vice versa. Right. So so I'm more into this kind of practical you know, application focused thing. There, that's not 
uh, you know, because you know you you can't really develop protocols until you know until you understand what you're protocoling. You know, it's just like it doesn't make sense for me right now with the group that I'm working with to 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 take time on protocols because I don't even know exactly where we're going yet, and, mm -hmm. and so I need to have these definitions in place, and then this sort of emerges, you know, on a more intuitive basis. But my brain is shutting down, guys. I yeah. Down and, and uh, so I'm, I'm. I can. I can. Yeah. Um, my COVID. My COVID brain. Yeah. Go back and go back and heal. But thank you for being here. All right. Mm. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Great to see you, class. Um, I, on one of the recent calls, I I think I told the story of a friend who worked for the Chaotic Alliance, which was the D Hawk who did the Chaotic stuff. He's the creator of the Visa Network. Mm -hmm. And he had some really interesting ideas about how uh, organizations should band together to do stuff. Then they created this consultancy called the Curatic Alliance. The only problem was the first thing any client had to do when starting a project with them was sign a big contract. And they didn't know what the work was or implied or was going to be. So what Klaus just said is totally right. It's like the, the, the protocols need to emerge from the work and not interfere with the work and certainly not prevent the work from following a natural flow by interrupting it like way up front. But, but once something is grooved, sharing what those grooves are in some explicit, understandable, replicable, modifiable way is brilliant. It's great. Like, like, like once, once we, once we know how we're doing jump rope, <clears throat> you know, and, and, and what the routines are that we like, uh, make that easily readable. Well, so let's talk uh, nuggets for a second, right? Like, yes. Klaus's books have a whole bunch of stuff in them. Right. And they're Lots not, of they're stuff. Not, they're not nuggetized. They're long books. They're long books. There's Mostly no Mostly written nuggets. with the aid of ChatGPT. There, there, there are nuggets there. He refers to the whole books as nuggets, which we have a disagreement on. Right. Um, but the nugget, the nugget pieces, the many possible nugget pieces that are that are there haven't been identified as nuggets so they're and, not easily reusable right and what if we were to say let's train chat gpt to read his stuff and pull out nuggets from his stuff turn it into a, a file format that's a nugget that we define what the file format is. This is where I'm saying, again, there's a lot of similarities because we could we could use a similar file format. We could use a fine, similar structure. We could build a protocol around that because, again, we're talking about the same thing. We want information that's shareable, that's reusable, and that is um, changeable, right? And so if we could agree on that as well, Yep. Then now we have uh, the same protocol for mm. these for these two uses that now makes it easier for people to reproduce any of this stuff and interact with any of this stuff because now there's two reasons why you could do it, right? Or you'd want to do it. Totally. And and so then taking Klaus's work and publishing it as a neo book which is, in, in your terms, um, a suite of nuggets. It's not a book. It's a suite of nuggets right. as far as Neo Books publishing is concerned. Not the, not the publishing of the book itself, but here are a suite of nuggets that assemble possibly into this output of a book, but could assemble to anything else. And... Now you can interact with all those nuggets because they're apparent and visible. And, and to me, that's no different than making them apparent and different in our protocols. So I think having a NeoBooks platform that allows us to have these nuggets and an interface that allows us to say, oh, I want, I want to adopt, essentially, I want to adopt this nugget and put it in my book, or I want to reference this nugget and put it in my thing, or I want to build on it. All of those things I think are the same. And so to me, there's a huge opportunity for us to work together, but also learn from each other's little world of how it could be easier and better and, and how we could collaborate on, on these protocols so that we're not having to 
uh, build all of this from scratch on both sides. Um, <clears throat> just a couple of things real quick. And Jen, Jax, I want to make room for you because I'm, I'm dying to hear what you're thinking. Um, Jax, you may be inferring here some differences in approach between Klaus and others on how to do a Neo book. And that, that's pretty true. So Klaus was in Google Docs. His, his, his nuggets are kind of whole books, which are mostly chat GPT generated with several different prompts and are long Google Doc documents, which have not been broken up into what I would refer to as nuggets. Um, Pete and I looked at trying to do some nuggetization, but we didn't spend enough time on it to actually work it. And I'm pretty sure that a, uh, any LLM, any worth its salt, would be able to draw little dotted lines and say, hey, the stuff above and below this, there's two different nuggets, and here's what I might label each nugget, <clears throat> et cetera, et cetera. And that would, that would be like, uh, there, there, there's probably a, a very reasonable path to nuggetizing a longer piece of work, which also opens the very interesting prospect of nuggetizing other people's works wholesale which I think is a really interesting thing. It's like, hey, how do we put at least markers in, meta metadata markers in popular books that mm -hmm. can treat some of the pieces of those books as nuggets? That's super interesting, and that's not even where I was about to go. Um, and Jax, the way I'm awkwardly trying to write a Neo book about uh, design from trust is by using Obsidian as the markdown editor and by pushing uh, separate nuggety markdown files to GitHub which is the, the the architecture that Pete and I, you know, this is the architecture of Pete's massive wiki, mm -hmm. uh, which isn't quite a wiki, mm -hmm. but but wants to be, and it, like it's it's a, it's a young sort of primal aspiring wiki to be, mm -hmm. um, and we would like there to be more things that make it much more intuitively wiki like. Um, but then, uh, uh, Jose, from what you just said, also, I'm thinking, uh, so, so Jack, those are kind of different paths you could take, mm -hmm. or you could invent a third one that works. But I mm -hmm. think you're, you're getting a good understanding of what we mean by nuggets and nugget mm -hmm. And one of the open questions for me is how big should a nugget be? What, like, what is the unit size of a nugget? Uh, and then the last thing uh, I wanted to throw in mm -hmm. was there's, um, and this is probably obvious, but once you get suites or, or uh, chunks of our protocols, they could become a corpus of protocols queryable by a, an LLM, which then means a muggle coming in doesn't have to find the way you named a particular protocol in a quirky way that happened to be about a specific medical uh, situation, exactly. but rather the LLM would be like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a couple of, here's a couple of protocols that fit roughly what your query is about and I can help you customize one for you. Mm -hmm. And that would be McGenius. Mm -hmm. That's, but that's the intention. What you've just described is where we want to go. Fabulous. Mm -hmm. okay. the, the idea that we're, what we're doing right now is, is still in the manual stages yeah. is only because we need to figure out the structure and, and have a structure that then uh, the LLM can, can, can actually work with. Right. Because one of the problems is if it's not structured enough, it goes crazy. It starts to build too much and, and loses sight of what it needs. So giving it uh, a JSON structure, uh, that's what we've learned so far with our testing, is mm -hmm. if you give it a structure and you say, a JSON, this field, this field, this field needs to be this way, no more than this, no less than that, that kind of stuff, then it does a great job. But if you give it a free, free form structure, it just goes nuts. It like does not enough, too much. It, it doesn't know what to do. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll go quiet now, Jax. I want to hear what you're ah! saying. Oh my goodness, so much, so much. Um, I just popped in there. Um, one of the things when, so part of my work has been, I've worked recently in infrastructure projects on communication and engagement teams and where you spend a lot of time, you'd be familiar with this work in some on, on some level, you spend a lot of time with that understanding of the project and then putting out information onto the website or wherever it goes. And when when um and also in a previous life of mine, I was an editor and edited a couple of books and other bits and pieces. So I've spent a lot of time packaging information or packaging knowledge or thinking about structure and thinking about, you know exactly this question is is the because a book in some ways is an idea that's just been expanded but then there's all but the, the way it's expanded is by grappling grappling all these other little bits and pieces and putting them together in a way that makes sense which is how I'm understanding the nuggets and then part of the way that I think you're talking about it and just to use that Lego example although now 
I can't look at Lego without thinking of the environmental disaster. Mm, good. Uh, you're welcome. Yeah, what we're talking about is really the, the the Lego pieces are the nuggets and then you build it whichever way you want. But this Lego piece came from here originally and it was in that project and it's in here. So you've got that kind of thing. Yeah, great. So Klaus has got this great big um, Jeff Koons puppy dog made of flowers, but you can't quite see where the Lego pieces are in it. Now, when... And one thought that I had, which is a little Jack Snugget, um, not probably very original, but right down when uh, generative AI started hitting our workforce, and I'm the person who's going, oh, look at this thing. This is pretty interesting. We should be looking. Everyone else is going, no, we're too busy. Keep away. But I could see that it is going to change the way that we write because people are changing the way they interact with the information. So your narrative structure, I'll pop that up here so I could remember, your narrative structure starts to, you start thinking differently about it because you're not writing for someone who can only read at a grade eight level and whatever. You start thinking about how can I put this information in a way that the AI can read it? Uh, um, or, I mean, AI obviously does read it pretty easily and put it together it does all that work for you but there has to be a mechanism that you start thinking about it differently what you're describing here is how you start thinking about it differently i think if i've got it right um and then with that so and the bit that the bit i haven't quite got here yet is if you are thinking about a nugget as being a discrete piece of information i think um Jose, this goes a little bit to your R protocols as well. There's a relational and a soft, mystical, magical way that we interpret information that, um, that when we put two pieces together, it's like the little bit of magic that happens between those two pieces and you go, ah, oh, right, that's the, that's the piece. And that is the, there's some kind of art in there which is uncontrollable, I think. And I'm not, I'm not, don't know where I'm going with this, but there's when we've, if we've got not, um, the nu if the nuggets, the nuggets are malleable, but they have to stay somehow intact for them to be a nugget. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then it's, yeah, then it's in the construction. Uh, probably for me now, once I start having a go of this, it's, I'll start seeing how that goes. But it seems to me really important that there's uh, a relational aspect uh, to this, which is that kind of mystical, magical, whatever bit. And there's a, a construction tools, materials part of this. Mm -hmm. And I think with, say, the uh, protocols is like, and the bit probably that class was going to too, is it the relational stuff has to come first. And then it's like, oh, and yes, we happen to have this protocol for it. And I wonder, if looking at these parallels if with Neo books, is that those ideas are floating around and what we're doing, they're already in, in action and we're collecting them and putting them together in a particular way that can be bring shape to it. So which means at some point it's kind of like, oh, and here we've got this thing that's constructed of these nuggets, we can take it and disconnect. Okay, so that I, I can't take that anywhere but that's that's where my that's where my observations going at the moment um oh I do have one more thing just to get it on there um for what class was saying earlier I popped it up in the chat is that they're along the same lines I've just been reading the last couple of days I wish I'd grabbed it and put it in the brain um but I've been reading about how AI um generative AI we're talking about here textual AI it is very good better than humans at dealing with conspiracy theorists. It actually can because humans wear down very quickly. And, you know, if we were have a conspiracy theory conversation after I've gone to the point, it's like, I don't believe this, you guys are nuts. I wouldn't be able to keep arguing or coming up with, I wouldn't be able to counter it. Um, or, you know, someone who's got 10 times my brain wouldn't be able to counter it. But chat GPT or whatever can just keep coming up with another reason or another part of that information. So it's actually quite good. It's better than humans at being able to speak into the um, 
the mistrusting kind of mm-hmm. spaces. Mm-hmm. Now that's I'm connecting that up with the way there is something there different that's happening in the way that the technology is engaging. And so once again, you're thinking about nuggets, it's going to be really interesting and useful to think about things in a nuggetized form that a chat GPT or similar can just, an LLM can just pick up and go, okay, well, here's this. The question, and I'll, I'll stop in a moment, the question that I have that uh, um, that I think I'll probably keep pondering on is how do we, this is a Wikipedia question, how do we in how do we keep the integrity of the nugget? And 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 then how do we trust that the nugget that we've got, trust, is is sound enough that I can use it and outside of its context? If I, I could if, if I could add a couple of things to that, uh Jax, because um I I think I think your um I think you're putting all the pieces together that that we've been trying to put together as well. My sense is is twofold. One that unlike a protocol, a, a, a neobooks nugget doesn't actually get used in its native form. Mm-hmm. My my gut is that it um, that it has its own tone which isn't going to be the same tone that my book will have and and your book will have and somebody else's book will have. Right. And it will probably get used in, you know, in my personal story of my experience of that idea. Right. So I'll say, you know, um, let's talk about, you know, that, that we're all, there's only one life. Let's use that as an example. Right. There's only one only life. Got, sorry, there's life. only one life. Yep. There's only Thanks. one life, and we're all just a piece of that one life, and we're just little uh, splinters of of that one life. Okay, so that's an idea, right? And let's assume that we have a paragraph that sort of describes that as the, that idea. I have all kinds of personal experiences that I could speak to if I'm writing about that, which are very different than your own, and mm-hmm. if I'm going to write about it, then that that would be different. I think that the nugget that we point to, that that is the idea, is a clear, concise way of saying that idea, but not how anybody's actually going to use it necessarily, or Mm -hmm. most people will not. But what I think it does is it connects the three of us. If we're all writing something and we're referencing life, it it is the thing that connects us. And we just say, oh, this this way that I framed it, that I used the page to, to do it with my own personal narrative um, is, is about this nugget. And then you use it in a different way and Jerry uses it in a different way. But the beauty is, that it links us, it brings us together, even though we're using slightly different language to express it. That to me is, is it's not the thing. It's, it's kind of like uh, taking a Lego, embellishing it with, with you know my own little bedazzling, <laughs> and then. Mm-hmm. You bedazzle it differently. I bedazzle mm-hmm. it differently. The Lego's inside, but it's not necessarily the the Lego as it is exactly. Yeah. Which is so with that, um, which is kind of like writing in itself in anyway, isn't it? Because you uh you know, you have a reference book. But the bit I'm really interested here is that it's not that there's a reference book that's static, it's a conversation, and that's the relational aspect. So there's a relational aspect and there's a kind of an agreed middle bit that we can bat around and change and morph a little bit as as we go through. Um, Fascinating. And and to me, sorry, I was just going to say, Jerry, um, if I look at that nugget and I could see our three uses of it, Right there's the link to the three uses of it. That it that makes that nugget so much richer. Yes, mm. 
Yeah. Right. It's like, here's three examples of it. And I could argue, hey, you know, Jax, I don't think you're really using that nugget. You're pointing to it, but mm, yeah. right. Back the conversation. Mm. Love that. Um, um, I think I'm, I think I mostly agree entirely with what you're saying, Jose. Um, uh, my starting point is that a nugget might be, a, might be a specific set of pros around a specific idea. The example I use all the time is assume good intent. So there might be a notion of assume good intent with some pros around it. And then just with that pros, it would be really easy to use um, GPT to say, turn this into fifth grade language, uh, turn this into a highly academic sort of language. And it would it would kind of remain the same thing, but it would have meta variants up and down. You, you could then say, uh, translate this in the Portuguese, do the same thing up and down. You could then read this into the record and have a podcast of exactly those words. You could perform it in a video. All of these would be connected to that original nugget. Then the question is, you're right, that particular phrase and tone and sequence of, of, of precise words I'm not going to work for everybody. So then, and I don't know how to call this, but is there a fuzzy neighborhood around a nugget yeah. where we're all talking about the same semantic, canonical, whatever idea? We're all we're all in the same neighborhood of thought with the same intention of the thought. We're just expressing it in different ways, right? Um, and I think that's great. I also mm -hmm. think that at some point we want there to be, hmm, I think that at some point for some purposes, there will be like the reference version of that thought. And maybe for some purposes means things like legislation. Like mm -hmm. when we say we're going to do something about identity on the net mm -hmm. or something or pseudonymity on the net and make it policy, then we need to know that that nugget is the policy mm -hmm. nugget. And we chose, and by the way, <clears throat> because these are wiki pages or pretend wiki pages, every nugget has versioning. So when mm -hmm. you actually sign up for something as an agreement, <clears throat> the way you pin that one down is it's this page of this on this version. And over time, you would then consult and see how it got improved or updated. And you might then upgrade the version of the nugget that you subscribe to and say, yep, I like all the changes that have made this nugget better. I agree to them now as of this date. And that you know, updates your our protocols and, and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think I, I think I haven't thought enough about like the, the fuzzy nugget neighborhoods and how mm -hmm. they work. It's, it's one of those like mm, something else happens out here so that our three different ways of expressing pretty much the same intention and desire could be easily found together, could mm -hmm. co-inhabit that space without interrupting or stepping on each other, um, and could still not be too confusing for somebody coming in trying to figure this out. Mm -hmm. My, I, I see the benefit of the conversation, as Jax points out, uh, amongst ourselves, which is, I think, really collaborating in writing is is what neo books is about. Um, the other thing is, I see as a reader the ability to to say, "Oh, I could read this whole five paragraphs, or I could look at the neo book nugget that these five paragraphs refer to, and I could go and go look at the. Oh yeah, I, I know that nugget. I got it. Okay, and I could go to the next one. And I got that nugget. I these are all. Oh, okay." interesting assemblage but there's nothing new here for me mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or oh hey there's the new nugget let me go explore that idea as the nugget and then look at 10 different ways that people inter inter you know interact with that nugget mm -hmm. and now i'm getting a, a deep breath of information about that nugget that i can't get from the the little nugget and i can't get when it's not in the wild because I see the nugget as a something that is kind of pure. It's simple. It's straightforward. And it's it's written in a certain sort of just basic way. And then it gets used in the wild in a very different way that enriches different people. They, that they understand it differently. They have mm -hmm. a different perspective, a different angle on it, different culture, all of those things. And I think those nuggets in the wild type examples to me there's a there's a beauty in understanding what that means mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i like that mm. a lot mm -mm. i like that a lot we have spilt over our time yes. um very nice you, and you and you have some hugging to go do so i have some hugging yeah. to do. i'm gonna, i'm about to dive into my secret uh uh cache of greeting cards and find a you did it kind of card because I've got a bunch of them. 
uh, and yeah, like that. So, so thank you. Um, this is really fruitful. I really appreciate it. Mm. Yeah, thank you. Cool. Um, yeah. And I'm, I'm very interested in doing a speedy prototype of a how page and a suite of, of our protocols that live, that inhabit the how page. So let's see what we can do to yeah. get let's, there quickly. Let's do that. And then, and then I can write Derek Sivers and say, hey, dude, your slash, your slash now page thing has inspired a, a, a lookalike follower. Um, LMK, if you like it or want to do something about it. So, yeah, cool. Right. Awesome. Thank you. And uh, thank you, Jax, for your things. Yeah. I read them this morning, but I was running. Oh, yeah, I've no been way. running all day. So, uh, yeah, but, okay. but thank you for your feedback. Awesome. Okay. okay. Thank Thanks you, guys. See you. Bye bye. -bye.